We want to turn to the investigation into the attack on our United States Capitol. A former White House counsel who some lawmakers have called the missing link in the House January 6th investigation has now agreed to speak with the committee. After being subpoenaed last week, Pat Cipollone, NBC News can confirm, will sit down with lawmakers for a transcribed interview behind closed doors. Cipollone, who was in the West Wing during the insurrection, has been mentioned by several other witnesses during the House hearings. According to them, he repeatedly pushed back against the White House efforts to overturn the 2020 election results and often voiced his concerns directly to Trump himself. But until now, Cipollone has refused to cooperate with the House investigation, citing attorney, client and executive privilege. Joining us now, New York Times congressional reporter Luke Broadwater. Uh, Luke, good morning. So obviously, Pat Cipollone's name came up a lot in the uh, jarring testimony from Cassidy Hutchinson last week. Uh, seems like he had to now step forward, or at least the, the committee needed to hear what he had to say to fill in some of those blanks and at least to corroborate some of what she said. Um, how is this, what does it mean to be a transcribed interview? Are we going to see him? What is this going to look like next week? Yes, this is a very important development for the committee. Pat Cipollone is an extremely key figure who is there for several of the major moments in this plot to overturn the election. And he may know things that we don't even know about yet that he could reveal to them tomorrow during this interview. I do expect Pat Cipollone's testimony to be played next week at some of the hearings. There was conversations about whether he should testify live in front of the public. Liz Cheney had called for that. But uh, the committee does like to know exactly what a person's going to say before they go up there. They don't want to turn one of these uh, televised hearings into, you know, a food fight. So they they like to know exactly what a person is going to say before they decide to put them out there. So I think we'll we'll see Pat Cipollone video clips, but not necessarily Pat Cipollone sitting at the witness stand. So and and the privilege uh, privilege would be, would it not, from your understanding, legal recommendations he made to the president, anything touching on his representation of the president where. Uh, he and the president would have attorney-client privilege where they're just talking to each other. Uh, but I, so I would guess uh, the comments that he made to Cassidy Hutchison, which would not be privileged. Uh, it, it, yes, so that was sort of the sticking point in the negotiations. Everyone concedes that Pat Cipollone does have attorney-client privilege with uh, Donald Trump, and he had sort of resisted coming forward and talking about some of those things. So I don't think we'll see him necessarily talk about direct conversations with Donald Trump, but that doesn't mean he can't talk about lots of other material. You know, we heard Cassidy Hutchinson talk about how uh, Pat Cipollone and Mark Meadows were going back and forth into the Oval Office to try to get Donald Trump to call off the mob. Can he talk about the things he said to Cassidy? Can he talk about the things he said to Mark Meadows? Um, mm. You know, we know he was there for meetings about seizing voting machines. He was there when Pat, when Bill Barr uh, offered his resignation. He was there when they had draft letters to, to false draft letters from the Justice Department and for when he shot down plans from members of Congress or from John Eastman to put forward false slates of electors. I mean, there are so many things that Pat Cipollone knows, and I think his testimony could be absolutely crucial for this committee. And he was probably the biggest witness left that they that they could get that they hadn't uh, yet. So, uh, you know, I expect this interview to be very important tomorrow. Hey, Luke, Jonathan Lemire certainly aids to the former president concerned, uh, the White House counsel now uh, cooperating at least to uh, an extent. Uh, give us a sense of this committee has had these hearings so tightly scripted, each hitting a theme, really building towards a narrative. The one they've announced on Tuesday is about the presence of some of these hate groups, the Proud Boys, the Three Percenters, et cetera, would not seem that Pat Cipollone's testimony would really fit in there. So what's your anticipation as to when we will hear from this White House counsel, when that hearing could look like, what sort of themes might they hit? I would guess that they use Pat Cipollone's testimony during the final hearing, which we expect to be about what they call the 187 minutes of an action. That's those three hours from roughly one o'clock 
uh, past four o'clock, where Donald Trump does nothing as the mob is storming the Capitol. We've heard some testimony already <laughs> that he was agreeing with the mob, that he was endorsing the chance of hang Mike Pence. Um, and we do expect Sarah Matthews' testimony, former um, uh, deputy press secretary, to be used during that time. And so I think we'll hear a lot from him then. But depending on what Pat Cipollone says on video, this committee has been known to throw out the playbook before, throw out the plan. And if he tells them something they didn't anticipate or found truly explosive, I think we could potentially see that at any time. All right, New York Times congressional reporter Luke Broadwater, thank you thank so you, much Luke. for being with us. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. And unlike certain punch bowl reporters, he actually got wow. dressed for the hit. Yeah, he looks good. <clears throat> yeah, he does. I mean, again, the bar's low. I mean, look at me. But still. Uh, uh, so, Lemire, you, uh, this is your beat, obviously. It's been your beat for a very long time. Uh, and uh, you got a book coming out about it. I'm curious, what, what do you expect to hear from Pat Cip Cipollone? And what... What holds do you think are the most important ones in, in the timeline that he could fill in? The big lie out July 26. Thanks for that plug, Joe. Yeah, uh, say, yeah, 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 yeah. We I appreciate knew you it. say that. You, you got to be subtle. I say you got a book coming out. Big lie you out just July. start talking, right? I'm and then we could go, oh, by the way, big lie out July. All right, we'll Maybe coordinate we'll better. We'll coordinate that, that better the next time. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, Cipollone, I mean, look, Cipollone is someone who is going to anticipate ex to exert attorney client privilege for some of the conversations with the former president, as Luke just said. However, where he's going to be really important is is corroborating the testimony we've already heard from Cassie Hutchinson, but others. And we know from re previous reporting that he, on January 6th, was warning anyone in earshot about how bad things were going and how he felt that there could be criminal liability that very day. He expressed at one mm. point to an aide that he thought Donald Trump could face some sort of charge on January 6th. Now, that, of course, didn't come to be. We know it's very complicated and potentially not possible to charge a sitting president, but he is keenly aware of the illegality, the potential illegality of what was happening there and is going to be someone the committee aides tell us they anticipate painting in stark detail that Donald Trump knew exactly what was going on. He knew that wow. it was wrong and that this could be a real problem for the former president as Department of Justice carefully watches these hearings. It's going to be fascinating right. watching the hearings, and I, I suspect DOJ is going to be watching, too. And, Willie, just one, one, one side note. I just want to thank you, and Nika wants to thank you, too, for taking the sandwich boards off of Lemire as he was walking in that oh. said the big lie out <laughs> July. That was nice. But he You're literally had the sandwich boards, which would have, of course, Eclipsed uh, that that yeah, you got high of his. So thank you for doing it, that. And it didn't work great because it was three o'clock in the morning. There's not a lot of people on the streets, but he was oh, trying yeah. anyway. Times Long Square again. Sold. Okay, yeah, that's good. All right, big lie out in July. Quickly. Still ahead on Morning <laughs> Joe. We'll be keeping they, an eye on they, London. You guys are so punchy. Yeah, Is it Friday? It's they, not. they cuffed him. They put a bag yeah. over his head. There's yeah. just wear so much on big the sandwich board. That was the problem. Yeah, that note, note taken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. Yeah, exactly. We'll be.